it's Melissa. In this video, I am going to show you a couple of tips and tricks in Silhouette Studio, my favorite design software for laser cut files. I am going to show you how to make mock-ups for your laser uh, design. So this is super easy. It's really not for selling those types of mock-ups. This is more so that you can decide before you go cutting your expensive materials um, if it's worth it. So I love doing this because sometimes that, you know, I have things like this where I'm like, what is this going to look like when it's all put together? And so making uh, mock-ups in Silhouette Studio, virtual versions of those allow you to basically make design decisions before you commit. And I just, I think this is so fun and easy to do. Um, so I want to share some tips with you. So Silhouette Studio is a free software. Anyone can download it. You will need Business Edition, which is a one-time $50 upgrade. Uh, in order to be able to export your design. So uh, I will link to where to get that in the description below. Otherwise, let's go. Okay, so let's start here in Silhouette Studio, which I think is the most underrated software, especially at its price point of just $50 to unlock all of the um, abilities that you have here. Now, I will tell you, you can use Silhouette Studio for free, even if you don't have a, so even if you don't have a Silhouette cutting machine. However, the $50 one-time fee is really just hands down worth it for the ability to export um, any file type, import, you know, a lot of different file types. So that's my suggestion. And also, if you want to be able to bring in your own patterns, as you see I have here, you will need um, at least one partial upgrade designer edition in order to do that. So what we're going to talk about, though, as I mentioned, is how to make uh, realistic mock-ups um, in Silhouette Studio. So these probably won't be for your listing photos. However, it's enough to really help you get an idea of what your ideas in your mind actually will look like prior to you actually cutting and being like, you know what, that actually doesn't look that good. Okay, so this is a design file. Well, this portion over here, not the Texas, that's, I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But this is a design file that I created in Silhouette Studio. I went start to finish on it in another video to show you how I just used basic shapes to create all of this. Um, it is for a snow globe th uh, shaker so ornament. So what I have though is this is the cut file itself. And um, in order to help me really decide, you know, how what color wood am I gonna cut this on? Should I sublimate? I really, um, have a hard time looking at just red lines. So what I like to do is I like to fill them with colors. And what you can do is when you have your design in Silhouette Studio, if you go over here to the fill color panel, um, this is the solid colors that you have. So you can pick any color. Uh, you, you know, you can just pick standard brown. However, if you go to the third tab here, you will have the fill pattern tab and there are some default fills in there. So for example, there's one here for dark wood and there's another one here for light wood. So just so happens that I have both pine and, and um, a darker, like a walnut, and I was trying to decide between what color wood I was going to cut for this um, shaker ornament. So one idea that I had was that I would just use all wood, so all dark brown. So let me, I'm gonna fill all of the pieces. Um, these two pieces here would actually be acrylic. So instead of filling them with a pattern, I actually am gonna fill them with like a super light blue, um, just because, I mean, you can fill them with off-white if you want, but I, I, the blue just gives me a little bit better of a visual. And then I like to put them in order. So. You know, one is going to be the front, one is going to be the spacer. I use this one with the, with the um, you know, little ribbon hole for the spacer. Um, one is going to be, whoops, I'm going to pull this forward. Uh, this one's going to be the acrylic that goes right behind the very front piece. So the front, let's say bring to front, is this. So this is how this whole thing would stack up, okay? Four layers. And now I've got the visual of what it's going to look like when it's stacked. But I also am thinking it might be kind of cool to score some snowflakes right here on the front. So that's why I have these snowflakes here. So what I'm gonna do with those is bring them, and I'm gonna select them both so that I can bring to front. Click up here so you can see, bring to front. And I'm gonna bring these here. Now obviously you can't see these very well. But what these would look like scored would really just be like a super dark, and so I'm gonna show it by with black. 
a super dark black and I'm not gonna have a fill on that. I'm gonna tr do um, translucent. So this is just a cut line that is black and it would look similar to that, although it's kind of hard to see. So I might, I wanna be like that. Maybe let's do like a light brown. Okay, well you get the idea. So once I find what I want, what I can actually do is I can select the other one, which is right here, and I can use the color uh, transfer properties tool, and then I can just select it, and it will those same properties will go to this one. Although it didn't really, I think I clicked the wrong layer. Okay, so I'm gonna get an idea here. I'm just gonna copy and paste a few more, resizing them, so I can get an idea of what my design would look like if I had score, if I score a couple of snowflakes on there. Now, this little piece is gonna go in the front. So my idea for this is, I'm gonna ungroup this, is to cut this piece in the other color wood, like the lighter color wood, and then either engrave, probably engrave, um, the, uh, the year. And I don't like red cut lines, so I always turn those to transparent, which you can do by selecting. And then up here, you've got the line color tool. You can click um, transparent. And then I'm gonna bring to front. Okay, and I'll slide this over here. All right, so this is what my the base of my design would look like if I did it in wood and acrylic. But let's say I'm like, you know what, I wonder what it would look like if I actually had the, a, a piece, uh, the wood front and then the acrylic piece, okay, and then let's say I sublimated the back. I think that would look really cool. So let me see what it would look like. Well, what I have here, again, in my fill tool is I am able to bring in any pattern I want. So by going to library and then up here, patterns, I can drag and drop, as you can see here, not only patterns, but photos as well. So earlier I pulled in a pattern that I had. I'll pull, this, I had one, I think it was this one, but I'll pull in another one, just drag and drop it. And those are going to show up in your fill pattern tool, which I'll show you how I, remind you how I got there, fill tool, pattern tab, and then I'm gonna scroll down, and my patterns, I have them sorted here, but this is the one that we just added. So I gotta select the layer that I want to take that, and then I can say, you know what? I actually think that's kinda cool. I think I like that. Or that one maybe not so much, but I really like that one, okay? So now, I can stack, again, I can stack all of my layers back behind so I can get an idea. And then I can move forward with my continuing to actually um, cut my design. So what I have here is just a visual. This is just showing me, yes, I really like that, or you know what, That's I think I should just go with the transparent. Now, the reason that I brought this one in as an example is for the same purpose. So again, let's say we're gonna cut this on light wood and I want, I'm want i trying to decide should I score the names or the words or should I engrave them? So in this case, what I need to do because this is not a design that I created myself, it's a design I got from Sofonsi, so it's an SVG that's already completely put together. So if I wanna see what are those words gonna look like, what I can do is right click, I can ungroup, but that's not gonna pull everything apart. What I need to do is release the compound path. And you can see all the letters kind of smushed in there with the same, they filled with that same fill. But if I go up here and I change the line color to like red, I'll be able to see them, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna select the whole thing and then deselect by holding down shift and clicking on the main Texas shape. Um, I deselected that, but I wanna group everything else. So I'm gonna say group, okay? And then I'm gonna fill those with the darker color as if I was engraving. Now, if you're wondering why did the middle of the A and the middle of the D 
Why did those fill in? Well, that's because I didn't make this a compound path. Now, what is a compound path? A compound path means all layers are basically um, compounded into one. Think of it like a donut. So right now, what we have is a stack of pancakes. Everything is just sitting on top of each other. So I, if I ungroup this, if I can move, I can select the middle of the D and just see it. See the pancake? Now, watch this. If I select them both and click Make Compound Path, now I've got a donut. I can't move the middle of the D. So that's what happened there, okay? So I'll just make the whole thing a compound path. Again, this is not going to change anything necessarily in creative space, but it is going to give you the visual of, you know what? I do like that idea of engraving the letters and maybe, maybe instead of engraving all of them, maybe what I'll do is cut the heart. So if you're gonna cut the heart, you can take, you need to make it a donut. So you're gonna take the Texas and the heart, you're gonna right click, make compound path. Now, where did my letters go? They're behind. Okay, so just right click and send to back and there they are, okay? So my point in showing you all of this is you can make design decisions, material decisions by using Silhouette Studio to create pretty realistic mock-ups for your designs. And I will tell you that I did use this um, very thing, here, this very shape, this very design to make some magnets and they turned out really cute. Um, but I loved that I was able to see ahead of time what they were you know, pretty closely going to look at because it's a lot easier to look at something like this as it is to look at something like this where you're, you know, it, it, it's just not realistic. It has no realistic um, aspect of it that is going to look like what the end product is going to be. And so mock-ups are really, really important um, I think in helping you make design decisions if you don't want to have uh, creator's remorse and after the fact realize, you know what, that doesn't look that good. Looking for more tips, tricks, and hacks in Silhouette Studio? Make sure you hit subscribe and don't forget to check out Silhouette U, which is my membership website. You can get seven days free, one-on-one -on -one chat with me, exclusive videos that I don't put here on YouTube, and a whole lot more. Not into that. That's all right. I got the free blog too at silhouetteschoolblog.com. Thousands of free tutorials that you can check out.